So I'm here in HKU. I'm here with Cheryl, who is a PhD student in my lab. Today we're going to be going out to the field to get some uh, field data for Cheryl's project. Um, this is for one of the chapters of her PhD. So Cheryl, do you want to introduce your project a little bit and explain what it is exactly we're going to be doing today? Yeah, so I'm working with sea cucumbers in Hong Kong, so we want to look at like the ecology of sea cucumbers here but the first thing we have to do is actually to understand like how the population of sea cucumbers been in Hong Kong so we have a lot of sea cucumbers here but we don't actually know um, how much of them or how many of them are present in different environments or in different habitats so we're going to out to do some surveys usually when ecologists do surveys we do like quadrats or transects and then we count everything that's in that area so we have like a number but then um, imagine like if you have to do that in a lot of places, like in my case, I have to know like the population of sea cucumbers in Hong Kong, which is a very large area. So that would be really time consuming, it would take like months to finish. So what we are trying to do is to develop a new method using some modern technology like machine learning and also like GoPro so we can more effectively count sea cucumbers. Cool. All right. So we're going to get ready and head to the field. See you there. <laughs> Sunny day. So we just finished the first site, uh, a swims, and it was pretty nice, right? There was quite a lot of sea cucumbers. Yeah, and there's a lot of urchins, fishes, corals. Yeah, it was nice, um, and the water was quite clear. And the water's super clear today. So yeah, it was good. And now we are off to the next site, which is Stanley. Stanley. You with the camera everywhere. <laughs> So what is this shell that you put in the bag? Yeah, so this is the GPS that I would carry so that it can track the way I go and then we can match the GPS with the GoPro videos that we take and then we know like where is it what is it the Cool!
I got two guys over there. I got tackle videos to go. He's got like a, a plastic bottle and a rope like a little boy. Scare the crap out of me. Yeah, so all finished? Yep, let's go. Let's go. Okay, so we just got back from the field. So Cheryl is now going to show us how she, uh, the next steps that she takes. So after she's collected the data and then what she does with that afterwards. Okay, so we've gone and collected a bunch of video from the field and this is what it looks like. Yep. So um, basically this is what we just done just now. So like videos. So we were going to use machine learning. So you can see like there are actually already sea cucumbers here. So. There are a bunch of them here. So what we are trying to do is we're going to use machine learning to count all of these sea cucumbers in the video. So you don't have to count them um, on the site. So you don't have to set up anything. You just have to go and swim and then just come back with the videos. So the first step is we're going to um, grab frames. So like individual images from the video. So it would look like this. So this is like an example of one of the frames. So you can see a lot of sea cucumbers here. So, so you have to, so first step is separate it out into different yes. frames? Yes, okay. separate the videos into the frames. So okay. for example, it looks like this. Okay. And then you can see like there are a bunch of sea cucumbers in here, right? Yeah. So um, to They're do- very clear against the Yeah, the water is yeah. very clear today. So the idea is that you have to do machine learning. So the first thing is that you have to teach your model or the computer how to know like these are sea cucumbers so to them they don't know what these things are okay. after getting these frames then we would do something called the labeling okay so labeling is basically just we use certain boxes with a certain program and then to box out the sea cucumber so for example this is one sea cucumber i draw a box around it so now um, this is indicating that there is a sea cucumber here so you're basically just teaching the program that this is a sea cucumber yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. So now uh, we have we have to do like a bunch of these photos and the more sea cucumbers you get, the more accurate your program is going to be because they have more stuff to learn on. Okay. So after doing a bunch of these labelings on a bunch of these frames, we can basically input all our labeled photos. So for example, here you see we labeled a bunch of examples of photos. So this is wise for yes. So this means that there is a sea like yes, there's a here. Yeah, there. exactly. So is there like a set amount that you have to do or is it just, does it just depend on the site and the program or do you just kind of like test it out like different amounts? Usually people would say a thousands of image minimum, but then thousands. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot. It depends. Like for example, you can see sea cucumbers in my case is very clear. Yeah. So it's yeah, easier clear. for the computer to learn. But if you're doing something that's like looking quite similar to the background, then maybe you need more photos. Right. And other trick is if you don't have that many data, for example, you don't have that many sea cucumbers in the site, which is quite common for ecology, you can do something called um, the augmentation, which means you are basically creating some data from your original data. For example, you can see like these are all augmented images. So you see that like that's twisted and stuff, so not like um, in your original shape. This is because oh, I see. Okay. yeah, we are trying to create more data from the raw data that we get. Oh, so you yeah. can use the same images, but kind of yeah. augment them, so you t turn them turn in different them, angles yeah, and things exactly. like that? adjust the brightness, um, saturation and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. so that's basically like how you Photoshop photos, right. so that these will look a bit different to the computer, so they would know, they would think like, oh, I have new stuff to learn on. Okay, so instead yeah. of having to get like thousands of separate images, you can use some of the same images, yeah, but augmented. Yeah, exactly. It. So okay. like my, one of the big part of my project is to try to optimize this part. So looking like um, what sort of augmentation we can do to have a better result, even we have less raw data. Okay, yeah, cool. Because this is basically a, a trouble in ecology st studies. We don't have that many animals to do the learning part anyway. Right. Yeah. So you're trying to just optimize uh, the analysis part so that you can, w when there are situations where you have like less animals or something, it'll still be efficient to yeah, use. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So um, we try to run on a test. So these, everything we're still trying to optimize, but then it's looking pretty good. So um, the output would look something like that. So after you train um, your algorithm, then you present them with some photos that you haven't labeled before or that they haven't seen before and we'll test out whether they can identify the sea cucumbers. So in our case, it's pretty good. So you can see, um, basically, they try to find where the sea cucumbers are. And then um, this is like a confidence score that the computer gives you. For example, 
0.81 means they are 81% um, sure this is actually a sea cucumber and oh, okay, it's right. also here. So they actually picked up a lot of the sea cucumbers but then you can see they actually missed some of them as well. Right. So this is where we have to fine tune our model so that they can pick up all of the sea cucumbers and in a much higher confidence. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. So is that what you're working on right now? Just ways yeah. of like optimizing your model so that you can get um, as accurate a count as possible of the Yeah, exactly. Problems. And then uh, uh, when this model is completely done, you can also make like using the backbone of it, you can also make adjustments so that you can also work on other animals as well. Oh, cool. So what would be the next steps for your project? So are you doing this at multiple sites? So today we went to two different sites. Are you doing more sites across Hong Kong? Yeah. So um, basically I have around 15 sites in Hong Kong. Okay. And uh, we're not using all of those sites to just train the model and to develop a method. But after we have developed this method, we are actually going to use it on the other sites. So eventually we'll have like a number or we have a knowledge on the populations of sea cucumbers in Hong Kong. For example, like how many of them are in the eastern part or how many of them are in the western part and then we can make comparisons or we can even do like scale up studies. For example, if we know um, sea cucumbers, they're actually helping nutrient cycle in certain parts. So if there are more of them, it means that they have more um, ecosystem services in certain areas and stuff like that. Okay, cool. So for the actual training process, you just do you, you just use data from a couple of sites and then the idea is to then scale that up to be able to use um, yes. the same uh, process across yeah, exactly. across different sites in Hong Kong. Oh, cool. Okay, so that's it for Cheryl's project. I think it's a really cool way of kind of optimizing the methodology. And like Cheryl said, you can then, uh, you might be able to then use this type of methodology for different species and across different sites. So yeah, it's very cool. Uh, we're both now gonna go home and Cheryl's gonna continue working through her uh, video footage. So see you next time, bye.